I'm inviting Tony up here. Uh, he's going to give us a testimony about his, his, uh, the divine law. And thank you. Do you want this or the panel? Uh, hello, my name is Tony. And uh, first of all, let me apologize. I'm super nervous right now. So I think I dropped out the words. Bear with me. Um, first of all, I'd just like to start with a little bit of where I was before the Divine Well. Uh, I grew up Catholic, um, never really living my faith the way that, not that I lived with no passion really, it's kind of something that was forced upon me. Um, so when I got into my mid teen years, I started experimenting with a life other than God. And through the um, result of my sin, I experienced some serious trauma. And this led to just a very quick spiral into a very, very, very dark place. Um, drugs, alcoholism, promiscuity, gang affiliation. Uh, uh, it, was, it was bad for a while. And I got to such a place of despair that I started to refer sin for the sake of sin uh, because I felt so, I felt like this is what I do now and you got to just keep going this direction. So, where sin usually leads, it leads, leads to uh, dissatisfaction. Uh, so I figured I got to do something about my life. Um, I'm unhappy and the sin is not making me any happier. So I thought, okay, I'm going to get married. I'm going to have kids. Yeah, family life is going to give me that fulfillment that everyone uh, seeks. Um, I got married. I started having kids. And I was a bit more unhappy because I realized that that's not where fulfillment lies either. Uh, so one day I'm driving home from work and I'm looking for uh, YouTube videos to listen to on the way home and theirs was a end times prophecy, right? So it scared the hell out of me. Um, <laughs> and I said the rosary and I was like, wow, that was, I feel good at this thing. So I said the next day and the next day and the next day and the next day. So I started to investigate more into my faith and sure enough, I was pulled into more of a mystical theology direction, St. John of the Cross, Teresa of Avila, and the like. Uh, so I stumbled on Louisa Figueroa. So I called my mom and I like, mom, have you ever heard of Louisa Figueroa? And she goes, well, I've been studying Louisa Figueroa for the last 15 years, and I've been praying for you through the divine will. <laughs> and so... <laughs> So one thing that's another, I really started to enjoy my faith. It was as if, you know, I was just drinking from the well and I just couldn't be satisfied with it. I was loving every second of it. And uh, so I started reading the, the writings more as a devotional practice, not really taking it seriously, but whenever I would, you know, feel like praying or I wanted to incorporate it, I would. But that's not where the benefits are. The benefits are taking it seriously. And once I started, incorporating the hours of the passion every day and at least one or two writings is when the fruits were undeniable, not only for myself, sometimes God doesn't give us space for ourselves, for our families. Uh, my wife was always a very lukewarm Catholic. Uh, she started saying the rosary and my son, who's four years old, is starting to practice meditation. Through no really pushing at all. One time I said to him, hey, buddy, you know you can talk to God uh, whenever you want in your mind. He goes, okay. And so I used to would catch him day after day and be like, what are you thinking about? He's like, I'm just talking to God about uh, how he made the flowers. And he said, and this is, I, it's going to bring you here because I see that it's, it's brought from such a dark self-hatred into where I am now and where I thought it's brought me. Um, you know, and there were struggles going through the divine world because it's not always the easiest thing to understand, especially in our, our weak, limited human knowledge. But once I realized that my understanding is not the litmus test of whether something is true or false, to open and to continually invite the truth of the Lord uh, into my heart and that he would make it known to me, whatever it was, whether it was in the divine world, whether it was over here, whether it was over there. But always had an open heart to his truth. The issues started to resolve themselves. Uh, I was like, oh, that's kind of a seemingly problematic thing. I would say, I would think, and I would invite the Lord. It would almost like flex. 
this is what it is. This is what it is. And I would check with Father Dave, I would check with my mom. Yeah, that's the right way. Uh, you know. And then on top of that, like Father Dave said earlier, the more you get involved in the Bible, you start seeing it everywhere. Everywhere. Just the other week, I called my mom, and there was some writing from Origen, uh, one of the fathers of the church, in 300 AD, that says, Every time one denies his own will for the will of God, the Holy Spirit reincarnates Christ within him and becomes another mother uh, to the Word of God. And that is the divine will basically related in 300 AD. So no matter how hard you try to fight it, as long as you stay open, relatively open, and trust in the Lord that he's going to provide the truth to you, uh, he will. And you see the evidence through, uh, like I said, the writing of the saints, they're all free creatures to divide them. And as the, the, the gospel reading was today, you judge a fruit, or you judge a tree by its fruits. So I encourage you, if this is something that you feel called to, to uh, read the writings with persistence, perseverance, and judge the fruits as you see fit. You'll see them. You know? So that, that's really all I have to say. Yeah. Just, I, I thank God every day for bringing these writings uh, to me, and Father Dave, and all of y'all for uh, letting me speak to you for a few minutes. Thank you. Thank you so much, Tom. This is wonderful. Um, 